Ahoy hoy, I'm Flannel Walk, and today we are on to pseudoscientist number 8. A flat earther that has a very sad channel. Now I don't mean sad as in you're going to cry while watching this channel. No, I mean sad as in you watch it and you think to yourself, what are they doing with their life? Now of course the channel that I'm talking about is Nathan Oakley 1980, and he runs a debate show that no longer has any debates. I mean, that's kind of like trying to make chicken noodle soup, removing the chicken, removing the noodle, and then calling it chicken noodle soup, even though it's clearly just hot water. Now, there is a reason why Nathan's debates don't have any debates anymore. And flat earthers will think that it's because globe earthers are just scared of Nathan. And that's not it. The real reason is because Nathan never actually did debates. In a typical show, you generally have Nathan shouting over his opponents, not letting his opponents finish what they have to say, and if his opponents try to do the same thing to Nathan, well then Nathan will just mute them. That is certainly not debate. I don't even know what you'd call that. Anyway, because nobody wants to debate Nathan anymore, his shows have kind of just devolved into the same thing over and over again. Any evidence of a physical geometric sphere edge that's a horizon formerly known as the curve of the Earth? We wouldn't expect any evidence for that claim, uh, Nathan. Any evidence of a physical geometric sphere edge that's a horizon formerly known as the curve of the Earth? Well, no, no but some people still think uh, that Earth curve is the horizon. Any evidence of a physical geometric sphere edge horizon formerly known as the curve of the Earth? Yeah, Neil. I'm sorry, no. Any evidence of a physical geometric sphere edge? That's the horizon formerly known as Earth curve. No, but we have physical evidence that our run is here. Any evidence of a physical geometric sphere edge horizon formerly known as the curve of the Earth? No, uh, we tried that with their 3959 radius and... Uh, it fell all apart there, the black swan. You get the point, at the start of every show he asks the exact same questions, and then one of his minions will just say no. It really does make me wonder why anybody watches his show, it's just the same stuff over and over again. It's flat earth, it doesn't change. Now if you are a globe earther that watches Nathan's show, just don't. Let it die. Don't try to debate him because he isn't going to change his mind. If Nathan really wanted to debate, he would debate someone on a neutral platform like he has been offered to do many, many times, but keeps on refusing for some reason. I suspect it has something to do with the fact that often there are moderators and he won't be in control of the mute button. And also, this will be my final video on Nathan Oakley. There's only actually one reason why I'm making this video, and it's because Nathan made the cut for the 12 pseudoscientists. So, for this final video on Nathan Oakley, let's take a look at one of Nathan's shows and see how bad they've gotten. There was one that piqued my interest from three weeks ago, so let's take a look at that. Also, it being from three weeks ago is very important. It's not from two years ago, it's from three weeks ago. Brian, can you dig out any FTFE video? Literally any. Okay, just give me a minute. Yeah, I get, give me a minute, I'm on a computer. Okay, this will be interesting. I wonder what video they'll choose. I mean, I already know, but you don't. We've got uh, Brian sent us. This flat earth that is crazy, but has the first ever flat earth. Is that the right? Is that, have uh, I said that title right? Okay, that's weird. That's not the video that he's showing on screen. And also, why is he starting it from the nine minute mark? Right. Walk away. Should we, should, we, uh, should we tackle a bit of this for ten minutes? Yes, Nathan, we're all really keen. Oh, well, that's good. Let's do it. You know what one of the signs of craziness is, right, Nathan? It's talking to yourself. Although, I suppose another one is being a flat earther. Next incredible <laughs> content creator is... is it, seriously? Him? I thought I was getting the best of it. I'm not having this. This is my episode 50. I'm FTFE. I'm bloody calling my agent. Hold on. Why is this? Anybody? What's going on? It's called making your video interesting, Nathan. Maybe you should try it at some point. If you actually make your videos interesting, then people might want to actually watch them. I don't know how I manage it, but I somehow manage it, so it can't be that difficult. Yeah, hello, NASA. Yeah, it's FTFE. Yeah, I thought you were getting me the best of the best from our special. Okay, so why did you get me is, is this what is this what people want from yeah. Globe Earth Proof? 
little comedy skits. I mean, yes, because Flat Earth is a joke, so why would we be serious about it? If you've paid attention to my last four videos, three out of four of them were about Flat Earthers, and I did not take the subject seriously at all, because it's a joke. What do you expect when Flat Earthers make arguments that are so stupid that make you question how they have the intelligence to be able to breathe? Yeah, I thought you were getting me the best of the best from our special. <laughs> Okay, so why did you get me fucking planner walk? Well, it's obvious that they got me because I am the best of the best. The globe is a joke. Well, yeah, of course I want to get paid. All right, then I I I do as I'm told. I don't know. Maybe that comes over as really funny to a globe earther. I don't know. I mean, yeah, people will find it funny. I may not be cracking up laughing at it, but it still makes the video more enjoyable than if it wasn't there. Up next is the incredible planner walk, I guess. Let's go! Ahoy ahoy, I'm planner walk. Wow, that's got to be an old video. Considering how short my hair is there, that video has to have come out well over a year and a half ago. The fact that they're looking at a video that is over a year and a half old has to say something about how they're running low on content. And FTFE asked me to cover the stupidest thing I've ever heard a flat earther say. Really? Well, let's cover the stupidest thing you've ever said. Oh dear, he's going to bring up that time I said zero degrees Kelvin, isn't he? That's got to be one of the stupidest things I've ever said. You've said, nobody is expecting to see physical geometry. End quote, plan a walk. Now, given that the horizon in the Earth curve maths is marked with an X and labelled horizon and is claimed to be blocking boats and buildings, his assertion, this idiot, that nobody is claiming we will see physical geometry is a direct contradiction to the Globe Earth claim. Oh, I was actually wondering why I got a whole lot of comments from Nathan Oakley fans saying the exact same thing about this. If I didn't decide that this particular stream looked somewhat interesting, then I would have no idea why. Okay, so I'm going to address this for the last time. So Nathan, listen up. So when I say that we don't see physical geometry, what I'm saying is that what we see is light. Now, the light can give us an approximation of the physical geometry, but the light itself does not tell us exactly what that physical geometry is. To know something like that, you have to work out how much refraction has affected the light, and in which way. That is why if you have an image where it is obvious that a lot of refraction is happening, that is not a good image to use. An image that is much clearer, and where the shapes of things are actually the shapes that the things are supposed to be, is far better evidence. But I know that Nathan is just going to completely ignore my explanation there, even if he comes across this video. Why do I even bother? So the question then is raised, why would Flat Earth, uh, Fight the Flat Earth, invite somebody who has literally stood in opposition to his globe, globe claim that there's physical obstruction at the horizon called Earth Curve? Why would you have him on your show? Because A, NASA forced him to have me on. B, you're completely misunderstanding the claims. And C, we don't simply ostracize someone because we might have a small disagreement. Hell, I have disagreed with FTFE on things like Flat Earth being a cult. Yes, it might have cult-like tendencies, but I don't think that it is a cult. Ironically though, Nathan's statement there does make Flat Earth seem a little bit more cult-like. I mean, it just takes someone like me to play it back and go, this idiot has told us that we're not expecting to see physical geometry. Nathan, the fact that you think that we see physical geometry really shows how stupid you are. If we saw the geometry of things, then we would be able to see in the dark. But we don't, because we need light. Which is very difficult, seeing as they all say such stupid shit. From that time- so, Poisoning the well fallacy. You've not actually talked about anything yet, and you've told your audience that what you'll hear is stupid. That's poisoning the well. I mean- the video is literally about the stupidest thing we've ever heard Flat Earthers say. <laughs> so of course, what you're going to hear is stupid. Also, it's not a fallacy if I'm not trying to make any arguments. I'm literally just poking fun at stupid things that Flat Earthers have said. It's not like I'm trying to debunk Flat Earth here. The time that Anthony Riley said that your independent variable is no longer your independent variable if it produces a null result, to the time that Eric Dubay just pretended
Because your independent variable is no longer your independent variable if you produce a n- null result. What's wrong with that? Because your independent variable doesn't change based on the result of an experiment. You have to decide what your independent variable will be before you even do the experiment. And whether you confirm your hypothesis or get a null result is dependent on what your independent variable is. That is because the point of the experiment is to try and find some kind of link between an independent variable and a dependent variable. And if your null hypothesis is that there is no link between the independent variable and the dependent variable, then your independent variable doesn't suddenly change because of that. What what are you going to do? If you validate Uh, that your presumed cause didn't cause the effect, do do you continue varying it to see the won't cause it? At that point, the experiment is over, Nathan. If you have a new independent variable, then congratulations, you're doing a new experiment. Keep, keep flogging the dead horse of the null that you validated. I didn't prove it, but it's going to still be my independent... But you're an idiot. You do realise that if you get a null result, you still want to publish your findings, right? And your independent variable isn't going to change just because you validated the null result. Like, if you publish your findings that you got a null result, you don't go, well, um... Because we got a null result, that means that we had no independent variable. No, you say, our independent variable was this, and it produced a null result. Like, the conservation of momentum just wasn't a thing. I actually think that that might have caused me permanent brain damage. Conservation of momentum? How is that directly linked to the previous statement in any way, shape, or form? Nathan, are you even paying attention to the video? Because I was clearly saying, these are some of the stupid things that I have heard Flat Earthers say. And when I was talking about conservation of momentum, that was in reference to Eric Dubé acting like it was just not a thing. He's talking about validation of null being the point where you go, all right, let's move on. Time to figure out what did cause it then, because we didn't, we validated the null. Therefore, you move on to a new independent variable. And he talks about conservation of momentum. What's he talking about? Nathan, here's an idea. There's a button on your keyboard which allows you to go back five seconds, and then you might be able to find out why I said that? Just a little idea. That was the biggest non sequitur ever. Again, he's acting as if I'm trying to make an argument, which I'm not. I'm just pointing out stupid things Flat Earthers have said. But none of this compares to the time that FTFE was explaining refraction to Rad Vlad. You see, FTFE was showing Rad Vlad an example of refraction. Showing him an example of refraction? Globe refraction can't be shown. 7 over 6 of the radius, it's a mathematical calculation. I mean, most people can understand that the black swan shows refraction. Well, if you're not an idiot, you'll be able to understand that it shows refraction. Also, I didn't say anything about 7 over 6R. This is what happens when you try to debunk someone that's not even trying to make a point. So when you say refraction demonstrated by Fight the Flat Earth, no, that's got R in it, and you can't measure it. Nathan. How about you go forward a little bit, and then you'll see what I'm talking about. Oh, let me guess. What we'll now get is a bait and switch. Because I, the fight, the flat earth, or planet walk, will start talking about conditions in sphere-shaped air. Like, actually occurring in the vision that you see. Not that we have sphere-shaped air to observe things through. Nathan, if you think there's going to be a bait and switch, You're the one trying to make it a bait and switch. You are the one that has been putting words in my mouth that I never even said. You know, I'm pretty sure that's called a straw man. I mean, this whole video is a straw man because I'm not even trying to make any arguments. He's also trying to gaslight his audience as well, which is something he does way too often. I mean, literally, Fight the Flat Earth thinks you can't see your own hand in front of your face because the air is so sphere-shaped it bends the light. You know, if I was Nathan Oakley, I would call that a straw man, but I realise that he's making a joke. Now, just for future proofing, because Nathan Oakley might decide to double down on that and say, no, it's not a joke. If it's not a joke, then it is a straw man. That's in requirement of the R value. You can't measure if you can't see physical geometry planner walk. Nathan, there are other ways to measure the radius of Earth without seeing physical geometry. You just need to use your noggin. I know that you don't do that very often, but at least try for once. In fact, he was showing him this example. This shows...
Where's the R in this? Where's the 7 over 6 of the radius value in this? This isn't refraction on a sphere. This isn't terrestrial refraction. This isn't atmospheric refraction. This isn't standard refraction. I wasn't talking about any of that, Nathan. This is what happens when you assume that I'm making an argument and then assume what that argument is before I've even finished speaking. This isn't even in air. So how is this in any way comparable? When you're talking about refraction on a globe, you're talking about 7 over 6 of the radius value. They're conning you. So, Planet Walk and Fight the Flat Earth are both frauds. Nathan, the point of that image is just to demonstrate that refraction can happen in a fluid. That is all. They've closed the suitcase on globe refraction and opened the suitcase with actual observable facts that have nothing to do with 7 over 6 of a radius value. I mean, if you want to convince someone that refraction can happen in a fluid, such as air, a good start is to show refraction occurring in a fluid. As you yourself said, Nathan, that is something that we can observe. There's a laser being bent by oh, refraction yeah. as it passes through it. Bent by refraction? 7 over 6 of a radius? No, because that is not something that I said. Maybe try debunking something that has actual arguments in it instead of something that's just meant to make fun of flat earthers. Someone want to add to me? Could I just... Uh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I want to add that. When uh, Craig said that uh, when you think you're seeing your hand in front of your face and not really seeing it, it's actually displaced due to 7 over 6 or uh, that's incorrect. That's not 7 over 6 or It shows that he doesn't know what 7 over 6 or is. Oh, God. Nathan has gaslit his panel into thinking that it's all about 7 over 6 R when I never said anything like that. The gradient. Yep. Very simple stuff. But Rad Vlad had a couple of responses like this one. So you wish they'd been. I'm literally you showing you a picture of the laser bending right now. I'm literally showing you it. It's right there, right in front of you. So you heard that right. His rebuttal to being shown a picture of a laser bending was that you wish they bent. But uh, 7 over 6 of a radius value needs an R value. We don't see physical geometry according to you, Planner Walk. He's really reaching to try and have different things to respond with, isn't he? It's like a broken record. Let me introduce you to... The black swan. The reason Planner Walk told us that we're not expecting to see physical geometry is detailed in this image. This is called the black swan. If the Earth was a sphere with a radius of 39.59 miles, that's the value used in your refraction, by the way, Planner Walk, then every distance to the horizon measurement could be no more than 1.2 times the square root of the observer's height and feet. That would be O 2 G. That is only if light doesn't experience things like refraction, which it does. Nathan's constant droning on here about the same things makes it obvious that he's not here to have reasonable discussion, because otherwise he would try to, you know, actually understand what other people are saying. But that's not the stupidest part. Nothing <laughs> wrong with that laser because they don't bend like that. <laughs> I didn't get to hear what the guest said before he got his sentence out while he was turned right down on an absolute shit connection that hadn't been validated by the host. We heard Craig laughing through the top of him. So I didn't hear what he said. Craig. I mean, there's a button on your keyboard that allows you to go back five seconds. Try pressing that a couple of times and then listen and you might figure out what he actually said. There's a reason why FTFE was laughing and it's because what was said was so stupid. Is that your neutral platform? Giggle through the top of the guest when he's offering a rebuttal so no one can hear it. Shocking. It's better than shouting over your guests whenever they try to make a point. I mean, that is why you don't have any more guests, Nathan. <laughs> I'm sorry, we're going to be wow. nominating Vlad for dumb fuck of the year now. We lost him. We lost Craig. We not only didn't hear the rebuttal, we didn't hear any refutation to it. I mean, the thing that he said was just so stupid. How do you respond to, there's something wrong with that laser because lasers don't bend like that. How do you respond to that? Someone oh, oh, put it in. Yeah. So yes, he literally said that something is wrong with the laser because they don't bend like that. Okay, that is stupid. I'll agree. Congratulations, Nathan. You finally figured out the entire point that I was making. That that particular thing that I pointed out right there is stupid. Congratulations. Meanwhile, your refraction isn't what you're arguing about. The fact that you've managed to bait and switch some idiot flat earther into believing that light 
bending through sugar water is somehow comparable to seven over six of a radius, you with your smug smiling face have told us we can't measure. I mean, there was no bait and switch there. You're the person that's talking about seven over six R. I never brought it up at all. Also, the flat earther didn't think that refraction was happening. The flat earther was just trying to deny refraction. Flat earther is correct. Every time one of these people, and start, it started with Mick West, does this sugar water nonsense right, with a laser, what they do is they don't point the laser horizontally in. They point the laser up, right? The laser goes up, and then that creates more of a bend down the way. So apparently by pointing the laser up, it's going to bend more. This is incorrect. If you were to point the laser horizontally, it would actually just simply hit the bottom. Because in that image, there is a point where the light is travelling horizontally, and it still bends down. Well, maybe that's because I'm thinking about it. But still, imagine being shown evidence of objects falling to the ground, and then... What about a balloon? In responding with, well, something's wrong with that object. What, the balloon going up? There's nothing wrong with my balloon. I let it go and it went up. What about the clouds? Because objects don't fall to the ground like that. Well, like clouds, they don't. They go up, you smug twat. It's called a comparison, Nathan. If someone said objects don't fall to the ground like that after I drop an object, they would be making a very stupid statement. I wasn't trying to make a point that every object drops to the ground. The only point that I was making throughout that entire video is that flat earthers say stupid stuff. So yes, that is the stupidest thing I've ever heard of flat I would agree, it came out of your mouth when you dropped something and ignored the very air you're breathing, which isn't falling. Nathan, I'm about to give you some of the best advice that you will ever hear, so listen closely. What you should do is you should go outside now, there are these places called parks. You need to find one. You can do so by using a map or asking someone, where is the closest park? Now, when you get to the park, what I want you to do is I want you to find this little green stuff that is pointing out of the ground. It's called grass. I need you to touch that. Anyway, back to you, FTFE. Why are you pointing down? I'm over here. Because you're both dicks. Okay, that was a good joke. I will give Nathan that. Bloody useless. If you want to sub to him, then I guess his link will be in the description. You can go and check him out when he debunks the radius value and its measurement by telling you that you can't see physical geometry. Very useful to you. If you want to be a flat earth believer, you can go and plan a walk and he'll tell you how you can't measure R. You'd have to be a real simpleton to believe that just because you can't see physical geometry, that means that you can't measure the radius of the earth. Because the amount of travel that goes on around the entire earth means that they need to know how far things are traveling like planes because otherwise it might run out of fuel. Anyway, I'm going to skip ahead a bit because there's a few other things that I want to address before I end this video. So when I was asked what is the most ridiculous thing a flat earther has ever said to me, I, uh, I felt spoilt for choice. Immediately my mind went back to the time when I asked Nathan Oakley what his favorite Christmas present would be. It would be three. He's never asked me what my favorite Christmas present would be. Nathan, I think that most people know that he never asked you that. Or do you think that your audience is so stupid that they need you to spell it out for them? You know, he probably actually does think his audience is so stupid that they can't recognize a joke. I should definitely keep that door open for fresh air. Yeah, sorry are we, mate. It's just disgusting. All right, I said sorry. This is it, this is your standard dick and fart jokes. Get out of the house. All right, wasn't that bad. See you later. Thanks for that, cats. Find the link. Thanks for what? He didn't debunk anything. Nathan, maybe that's because the point of the video wasn't to actually debunk anything. Here's an idea for you, Nathan. Next time, try to actually choose a video in which arguments are actually being made, rather than choosing a video in which no arguments are being made, and then trying to claim that we are making arguments, and then debunking those straw men, and then claiming that you've won. However, I suppose that would involve you actually having to try to respond to actual arguments, I guess. No Ooh, wonder did. you guys Our hate us. No wonder you don't like us. Because when you come and listen to this show, it's debunking after debunking after debunking. We are housekeeping questions daily. So much debunking that they'll even try to debunk things such as jokes. There's a reason why nobody takes you seriously, Nathan. And as for the housekeeping stuff, that's just the same thing every day. That's boring. 
that probably drives people away from your channel. That's what you have to tolerate when you come here. What do you get when you go to the equivalent over on the globe side? You get fight the flat earth pretending to talk to NASA on a phone and dick and fart jokes from cats. That's what you get. I mean, oh, if you're an audience it's member, like a bad episode I'd feel Saturday insulted. Oh, my bad. I'd feel insulted if I was an audience member. They think you're stupid. They're talking to you like children. Yeah? They think you're a 12-year-old that's going to be amused by fart jokes. Here, where we take this subject seriously, we debunk the globe. Well, that's the problem, isn't it? You take it seriously when it's not a serious subject. Flat Earth is a joke. The only reason why it's as popular as it is today is because people decided to laugh at it. And yeah, I'll make childish jokes. So what? That doesn't change the validity of my arguments. If you don't like that, then... Now, some people might point out that I do make arguments against Flat Earthers, and thus I must be taking it seriously. Now, you can make counter arguments whilst not taking things too seriously. That is what I have been doing this entire video. But also, sometimes it can be interesting to debunk points that Flat Earthers make. You can actually learn a bit by trying to debunk things like Flat Earth. I mean, I've learned a bit by debunking Flat Earthers. If I can explain to a Flat Earther why they are wrong and change their mind, then that is a good thing. But I'm still poking fun at Flat Earth while doing so. I feel like it's also more entertaining if you're not completely taking everything seriously. And that's kind of why I don't really like debates that much. Yeah, well... The debates are good, I guess. They, you know, I get to point and laugh at the flurfs, and you know, it's hilarious. I have a lot of fun. Wait, FTFE, where do you come from? Oh shit. Um, yeah. Uh, so I was just, um, you know, just checking in on 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 you to make sure you're okay. Uh, you're okay. You're, you're you're okay. Yeah. Um, I actually don't know now that I think about it because I've just been watching a Nathan Oakley video. Actually, can I get your opinion on it? A Nathan Oakley. <sighs> Yeah, I, I guess so. Um, just send me the video. I'll have a, I'll have a quick look and uh, tell you what I think. One hour later. So yeah, planner. Um, you know that I know where you live, right? Uh, yeah. Well, um, <clears throat> what? Then why did you make me watch a, a Nathan Oakley video? It wasn't very nice. Sorry about that, uh, but I do want to know what you thought of it. I thought it gave me a headache because I had to listen to Nathan Oakley, but <laughs> I did find it funny that the video of uh, of mine he chose to debunk wasn't a video where, you know, I was debunking Flat Earth or anything. He, he chose a video that was literally a comedy show about stupid things Flat Earthers were saying. Uh, there was a bit where I did debunk something stupid said by, by Riley uh, when he talked about the eclipses and how there should be one every month. And I explained in the remedial classroom segment how, you know, a lot of the time the shadow is just being cast into space because the, the moon, the earth and the sun aren't lined up. So there won't be an eclipse every month. Uh, and they, they, they sat there and they watched that entire segment and then talked about how I didn't debunk what was said. Did I stutter? I said, get out. I hate you all. You didn't debunk anything or prove orbital motion, though. Like they didn't just watch it. Maybe they're they're dumb. Maybe they've got memory of goldfish. I, I, I don't know. But yeah, um, don't ever, ever make me watch a Nathan Oakley video again. OK, OK, I'll keep that in mind. Anyway, I've got a video to finish. So you do whatever you were doing before, I guess. Uh, OK, well, I was trying to get permission from from NASA to, you know, take out some flat earthers but you know, there's problems with with hr and paperwork and stuff anyway um i probably shouldn't talk about that on camera actually forget i said anything uh, i'll see you later take care anyway i'm not going to respond to any more of nathan oakley's video because as ftfe mentioned it's very difficult to sit through a nathan oakley video i'm also not going to be responding to any more of nathan oakley's videos nathan oakley could go ahead and make a full stream dedicated to responding to this and I would just ignore it. He has repeatedly shown that he's not willing to engage with people in good faith. Considering that he constantly misrepresents what I'm saying and basically strawmans me, I don't think it's worth engaging with that anymore. I could re-explain my position a thousand different ways, and he would still say that I'm saying the exact same thing, which I'm not saying. That is dishonesty. Why would I continue to engage with that 
when I could be doing other things with my time. Not to mention that he refuses to go anywhere but his own channel to debate people because that's the only place that he has his mute button. If he were interested in debating, then he would have gladly accepted the offer to debate conspiracy cats on the Department of Conversation, but he didn't. So yeah, regardless of how many views responding to Nathan Oakley is going to get me, because it often does get me quite a few views, I'm just going to ignore him and let his channel die. And also, Nathan, if you're watching this, I want you to know that you are responsible for your own channel's decline. There's a reason why people don't go on your channel to debate you anymore, and it's simply because you're a dishonest prick. Why would people waste their time with you when you're just going to shout over them and not let them get a word in? That's your fault, buddy. Anyway, let's close the books on this. Nathan, go fuck yourself. As for everyone else, if you like this video, leave a like and subscribe. Join us tomorrow where we're going to be looking at someone who I'm not really sure if they're a flat earther, but they've got some things to say about Agenda 21, so that'll be fun. As always, a big shout out to my $20 or more patrons, Hugh Jars, MC Nutkin, Shaky, Jeter Lone, Nathaniel Miller, Vermont1777, Wolfie, Mori, Graymore Ghost, Kid Vicious, Sacha Campbell, Kitten McKinnon from Kitten Town, Craig D'Amelio, Nathan Thompson, and Richard M. Chapman. If you want to support me financially, you can do so on Patreon, there should be a link there. But anyway, I will see you in the next video. Between you and me, thank you for watching.